welcome to my kitchen my name is Noreen and I wanted to talk to you today about salt I had a couple of questions over the last few weeks um, as a lot of you know I've I've totally switched over to Himalayan pink salt as my chosen uh, or preferred salt and there are a few reasons for that um, the the main reason which is um, the health benefits but also I was using I was solely using sea salt as my preferred salt but due to the uh, the, the nuclear problem in uh, Fukushima Japan um, the seawater is now being contaminated with radiation and I know what the press is telling you and I know that they're not really paying a lot of attention to that but we have a couple of things you know we've got a double whammy here we have the issue of the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico and if you don't think that that's affecting sea life all over the globe then I you know I think maybe we need to do a little more research on that but I think that that's going to have a great impact over the coming years with what happens to sea life and ocean life and subsequently the salt that's being taken out of the ocean to produce sea salt as well as the problems in Japan with the radiation and the nuclear fallout and all of that. So um, we've decided to switch off of sea salt altogether. Now I, that being said, if you have sea salt in your food storage that you've had for you know six months, a year, two years, I would be very confident that that is safe sea salt. Um, I would not buy any sea salt from this point on and be confident that it was safe to eat. Um, now I also had someone ask me why I don't use land salt which is the blue box, Morton's, Morton's in the blue box, the little girl with the umbrella table salt which has iodine added to it which is completely unnecessary because we don't have a problem with iodine deficiency in this country anymore because we have lots of other ways to get that iodine but if you have a thyroid problem and you require the iodine it could help you um, I don't like the table salt is much higher in sodium than sea salt or the pink salt and it really has no other nutritional value except to season your food um, land salt that you buy in a little blue box has been chemically cleaned and the chemicals that they use to clean that salt um, can sometimes be questionable. It, um, I'm going to read to you a little information that I have some notes here. So if you hear me um, rustling papers, I am. But what you're looking on the screen at right now, this is the, the chemical symbol for salt. And if you were to look at the periodic table of elements, this is what you would see if you were to look up the, the chemical symbol for salt and what it is is the symbol for sodium chloride and this encompasses a lot of different things all salt has this symbol but not all salt is the same um, we're talking about our typical table salt that we all grew up with the, the little girl with the yellow umbrella um, that has been around for a hundred years and is a fabulous advertising icon so the, it says the typical table and cooking salt in your grocery store has been chemically cleaned. What remains after typical salt is chemically cleaned is sodium chloride, an unnatural chemical form of salt that your body recognizes as something completely foreign. This form of salt is in almost every preserved product that you eat. Therefore, when you add more salt to your already salted food, your body receives more salt than it can dispose of. This is important as over 90% of the money that people spend on food is for processed food. Typical table salt crystals are totally isolated from each other. In order for your body to try and metabolize table salt crystals, it must sacrifice tremendous amounts of energy. Inorganic sodium chloride can keep you from an ideal fluid balance and can overburden your elimination systems. When your body tries to isolate the excess salt you typically expose it to, water molecules must surround the sodium chloride to break them up into sodium chloride ions in order to help your body neutralize them. To accomplish this, water is taken from your cells in order to neutralize the unnatural sodium chloride. 
This results in a less than ideal fluid balance in your cell structure. <clears throat> now that's a basic idea of what table salt does to your system. So graduating from anything besides table salt is a step in the right direction. And I think that, you know, a lot of people in our country have problems with high, uh, high sodium levels. They have blood pressure problems. So the first thing their doctor says is to stay down on, on the salt. Now, uh, the human body requires a certain amount of sodium every day. In fact, low, low levels of sodium are, can actually be deadly. So, you know, you put that in combination with someone who's trying to lose weight and they go by that old that old standby to drink a ton of water every day. So you lower your sodium, you increase your fluid uh, intake, and you actually have a deadly recipe for uh, cardiac arrest. Because what will happen in some cases, not in all, and no, I'm not a doctor, however, I've done my research. Um, in, in some cases, someone who go, drastically reduces their sodium intake and drastically increases the amount of water they're drinking on a daily basis and then goes out and tries to jog a mile when they're not used to doing it. They're going to, you know, potentially put themselves in at risk for um, collapsing on the pavement and having to be rushed to the hospital. So all of this stemming from salt. I mean, sometimes we just don't think about this, right? But I wanted, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just trying to help you understand. I think that one of the better choices now is to go with the Himalayan pink salt, which is a mountain land mined salt. You know, not all salt comes from the ocean. Um, in fact, the salt that you get in the little blue box comes from land mines in Utah. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. There are, there are salt flats uh, in the American Southwest, and Morton's salt is based in Utah. You know, if we think about it for a minute, it makes complete sense because when Joseph, uh, when, uh, not Joseph Smith, when, when um, uh, Brigham Young took the, uh, the Mormon pioneers to Utah, they came upon the Great Salt Lake, and that's where they settled. Um, and there's a reason that it's called the Great Salt Lake because it is a land lake that has a high salt content. And that is because it sits atop mineral salt, not mineral salt, but it's uh, atop land salt mines. And that is why the water content in the Great Salt Lake is so high. Uh, the water content, the salt content in the water in the Great Salt Lake. So let's see, we're going to switch pictures now. This is Himalayan crystal salt or Himalayan pink salt. I buy mine from Amazon from, um, let me see, I'm looking at the label, from a place called the Spice Lab. I'll put a link below. This is the one place Cat's Cradle and I have found the, to be the best price. Um, and I have some interesting facts that I just wanted to, um, I, I have this, I'm going to read it to you. So uh, pardon me if it's long and boring, but I think it's important for us to understand it. Salt is essential to life. You cannot live without it. However, most people simply don't realize that there are enormous differences between the standard refined table and cooking salt most of you are accustomed to using and natural health promoting salt. The differences can have a major impact on your staying healthy. If you want your body to function properly, you need holistic salt complete with all natural elements. And today's common table salt has nothing in common with natural salt. And when we're talking about natural salt, I am referring to Himalayan pink salt. Your table salt is actually 97.5% sodium chloride and 2.5% chemicals such as moisture absorbents and iodine. Dried at over 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, the excessive heat alters the natural chemical structure of the salt. Um, this salt that we're talking about, the Himalayan pink salt, is over 250 million years old. This is by far the purest salt available on earth and is absolutely uncontaminated with any toxins or pollutants. And once you learn about how beneficial it can be for you, you're going to be amazed. Um, this information I have taken from Dr. McCullough's website. And regardless of how you may or may not feel about Dr. McCullough, maybe you don't know about him. Um, he gives good information. I know a lot of you may think that he's just trying to sell stuff. But the information he imparts is good. It doesn't mean you have to buy his stuff. I don't buy his stuff. 
but I, I do read his information and then I go in a direction that my, my pocketbook can afford. Um, so this salt from the Himalayas is known as white gold and together with pure spring water, Himalayan crystal salt offers all the natural elements exactly identical to the elements in your body. The very same elements originally found existing in the primal sea. Containing all four, all of the, all four, containing all of the 84 elements found in your body. The benefits of natural Himalayan salt include regulating the water content throughout your body, promoting the healthy pH balance in your cells, particularly your brain cells. I think a lot of people forget that our brain is um, mostly water and fat and it needs salt to function. Salt is important in helping electrolytes to, uh, to perform what they need to do in your brain. Promoting blood sugar health and helping to reduce the signs of aging, assisting in the, gen in the generation of hydroelectric energy in the cells in your body, it, uh, absorption of food particles throughout your intestinal tract, supporting respiratory health, promoting sin sinus health, prevention of muscle cramps, promoting bone structure, regulating your sleep, it naturally promotes sleep, supporting your libido, promoting vascular health. In conjunction with water, it is actually essential for the regulation of your blood pressure. And <clears throat> he goes on to say that you are losing precious intracellular water when you eat normal table salt. For every gram of sodium chloride that your body cannot get rid of, your body uses 23 times the amount of cell water to neutralize the salt. Eating common table salt causes excess fluid in your body tissue which can contribute to cellulite, rheumatism, arthritis, and gout, kidney and gallbladder stones. And when you consider that the average person consumes 4,000 to 6,000 milligrams of sodium chloride each day, and heavy users can ingest as much as 10,000 milligrams in a day, it is clear that this is a serious and pervasive issue. Um, because well over 90% of the world's salt is being used directly for industrial purposes, that require pure sodium chloride, the remaining percentage is used for preserving processes and ends up on your kitchen table. With the use of rigorous advertising, the salt industry is successful in convincing you that there are actually health advantages to adding potentially toxic iodine and fluoride to salt. We don't think about that a lot, but salt is processed with water, and a lot of the water that the table salt is processed with contains fluoride, and we all know what the fluoride does. In addition to um, your table salt, very often contains potentially dangerous preservatives. Calcium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, and aluminum hydroxide are often added to improve the ability of table salt to pour. You know, um, I don't know if any of you remember, but that is like a big part of Morton's Salt advertising campaign. Uh, when it rains, it pours because it, it doesn't clump up. And there's a reason for that. Um, because of all the lovely things they've added to it to prevent it from clumping. Um, aluminum is a light alloy that deposits into your brain, a potential cause of Alzheimer's disease. Um, today's table and cooking salt is void of the vital trace minerals that make this Himalayan crystal salt so precious. Crystal salt has spent over 250 million years maturing under extreme tectonic pressure far away from exposure to impurities. The salt's unique structure also stores vibrational energy. All of the crystal salt's inherent minerals and trace elements are available in colloidal form, meaning they are so small your cells can readily absorb them. The crystal salt from the Himalayas does not burden your body as other salts do. It is very difficult for your body to absorb too much crystal salt since there are powerful and effective feedback loops that regulate this process. Natural crystal salt always promotes a healthy balance and does not contribute to high blood pressure like typical table salt. Crystal salt's array of elements forms a compound in which each molecule is interconnected. The connectedness allows the vibrational component of the 84 trace elements pre present in the salt to be in harmony with each other and adds to the ability to promote a healthy balance. When it comes to the power of natural salt, nothing compares to Himalayan salt and here's why. It is the highest grade of natural salt. Under an electron microscope, crystal salt has a perfect crystalline structure. It is mined by hand and hand washed. 
Crystal salt is immune to electromagnetic fields. Crystal salt contains no environmental pollutants. There is no limited shelf life and no need for silica packets to prevent clumping. Um, key minerals in Himalayan crystal salt promote a healthy balance in your body. Turn page. And I'll put a link to this article if you'd like to um, go there yourself. Um, Himalayan crystal salt is uh, in its native form with all the vibrational energy intact and helps promote healthy balance in your body. Promoting balanced electrolytes helps you keep your body in homeostasis, the balance of chemicals that is conducive to the body's function. The renowned Frazinus Institute in Europe analyzed the Himalayan crystal salt and proved that it has an amazing array of important trace minerals and elements including potassium, calcium, magnesium that help promote healthy balance by maintaining fluids and replenishing your supply of electrolytes whenever you sweat heavily. This salt does not supply iodide, a necessary nutrient. So you're going to need to take some kelp tablets or um, something along those lines and I know that kelp comes from the sea but if you buy your kelp now and stock up on it chances are that you will have no problem with radioactive kelp. Um, many people believe sea salt is a healthy alternative to table salt, but there is, this is no longer the case. The oceans are being used as dumping grounds for harmful toxic poisons like mercury, PCBs, and dioxin. Reports of oil spills polluting the sea are becoming more frequent, with some 89% of all sea salt producers now refining their salt. Today's sea salt simply isn't as healthy as it used to be. If you were to look under a microscope at sea salt, you would see it has irregular and isolated crystalline structures disconnected from the natural elements surrounding them. Thus, however, many vital minerals it may contain, they cannot be absorbed into your body unless the body expends tremendous energy to vitalize them. And your body's net gain is small compared to the great loss of energy. So that, I just, I'm not going to read the rest of it because it really is kind of um, redundant, let's say. But Himalayan salt, you know, if you change these, this is what we keep talking about, making small changes in your life. Um, Himalayan pink salt does not have to be um, this uh, chunky. You can get it. The, the, the stuff I get is called culinary. Um, I guess it says um, it's extra fine grain is what it is. And it's a culinary sea salt or culinary salt. Whoops, but um, these little changes, you know, you put this in your salt shaker instead of the white salt or the sea salt, which is what I have been using before. I'm not suggesting that you pitch everything that you have. If you have it, don't get rid of it. You know, keep it in your storage and use it. It's still salt. Um, but I think that if we can make small changes now and they don't affect our pocketbook a whole lot, I mean, a two pound bag of this Himalayan pink salt is about six dollars or six, between six and ten dollars. Um, I buy three bags at a time. I just shared some with my mother who had a conversation with me, um, about the sea salt because now I've got her starting to use those brain cells and say, hey, all that stuff going on in Fukushima and with the oil spill, should I be eating this sea salt? And I said, no, we stopped using sea salt. We went to this stuff. So I took her some yesterday and I took her the information so that she could read it for herself. And, you know, this this has benefits that are, you know, they're tenfold because the, the, the Himalayan salt is so much better for us than even the sea salt. We didn't even know it because, you know, Himalayan salt is, is pretty new. I mean, I'd say pretty new in the last five years. I just started hearing about it. So now we're able to have access to it. And I just hope that we continue to be able to have access to it. This is what I'm putting in my storage. I think that I would encourage you to go and do more research and to all the people who ask me questions about it and why we don't use table salt or sea salt anymore. This is why. And I think those are all good reasons. So I hope you'll go ahead and do your own research. I'll put some links below so you can go do some reading for yourself. And um, I'll put a link to where I get mine at Amazon. And I hope that you like this and I hope that you try it. Until next time, I'll see ya.